All right, what's going on, guys? Tyler Santiago here today with the uh, Santiago Show, Santiago Sports Podcast. We've got two very special guests, several people, my yes. people. Yes, sir. We've got Mike Carey over here and uh, Miles Hartsfield. Yo, yo. So today we're going to talk about a bunch of different things, including the NFL, football, uh, takes on food, all different kinds of stuff, youth football, and whatever else comes our way. So we'll, we'll kind of see. But before we get into that, i got to shout out our sponsors real quick. The Collects app. The Collects app is a card app for scanning collectibles and cards and seeing exactly what they're worth. They have market prices and what items are sold for. So shout out to the Collects app. And WagerTech. Uh, WagerTech Sportsbook is a sportsbook you can open up anywhere in the world. You can bet on anything, any amount, anywhere, anytime. So shout out to Wager Attack. Um, we'll get right into it. So like I said, these guys next to me, to the right and left of me, are both from Sarahville, New Jersey, where I grew up, uh, bleed blue, just Always. like just like me. <laughs> I'll never, never, ever get away. Like, I I'd love to get away from Sarahville, but like, Sarahville always like draws you back. You always gotta stay loyal to the hometown. So. Absolutely, absolutely. So Mike, uh, I actually have known, probably not, maybe longer than Miles, I don't know, it's pretty even, because yeah. his dad actually coached us Morgan Parlin Panthers. There's Back no such the thing U as that. Ooh, sir, oh, he was a leprechaun. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, into we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But uh, it's yeah, been a long time. So your dad coached for Morgan Parlin Panthers, mm -hmm. and then obviously you played. When he started coaching, were you already in high school, or were you? Still... No. So he coached me my second year in like junior pee wees or something like that, mm -hmm. and then he started becoming like the junior pee wee head coach, probably around the time you were playing for him. And then I was yep. a couple years older than you, so I, I might have been like, uh, we're like three, four years apart. Yeah, you were a senior when I was, was a, a freshman. freshman. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And he's a year older than me. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I think I was probably still playing for the Panthers when you were playing. Yeah, I was, your dad coached, yeah, I helped out with him. I kind of, I started yeah. coaching early, so I was helping out. He's I the remember. real coach, Carrie. Who, Dude, now he's yeah, coach yeah. Mike. He's <laughs> coach Mike. <laughs> yeah, coach Mike. He's coach, right. Mike. coach Mike. I'm coach Carey. Dude, I, I remember those that. days. Those are those are crazy. Who was... I, I forget the one. All right, so there's like three coaches that were with the Panthers forever. There was Coach Tony, who's like the, mighty yep, mites. Tony. Uh -huh. His grandson is playing for the Junior Bombers now. Really? Fun fact. That's yeah. dope. And then there was another dude. I think he passed away. Um, might have been Gary. He was a tall dude. Mustache. Oh, Gary Bodak. He's, yeah. yeah. He's still going. He is? Yeah, he's oh, still thank up God. and kicking. Um, he's my, he coached with my dad. Yeah. So he ran like the offense on the Junior Peewees. Yep. I remember him. Yeah, he lives around the block from us. We still kind of see, we see him every once in a while. Those are the good old days right mm -hmm. there. Man, I remember Big that. Big throwbacks. I, got, I do have to bring it up, though. Miles was a leprechaun. We were we were Panthers. We hated, first of all, the worst colors, bro. Notre Dame colors, those were ugly. Oh, they man. were ugly. Were you hating on the leprechauns <laughs> like that? So I, why, why, I mean, they were ugly colors. I mean, we didn't have great colors either, it but we had green and colors. gold. Like, they, if they threw a little navy in there. Something else. Something else. Just know that we was the best. I still got the Mayor's Trophy trophy. All right, when, all right. I went, when I went for five <laughs> touchdowns on five carries. In, humble brag, I Yeah, guess. humble brag, but still got it in my crib when we used to beat the Panthers. All right, so, so let me ask you this. So you started high school in 2011, right? 2011, 2012. Yeah, 2011, 2012. Because yeah. I, I got in... 2012. So that means 2010 would have been your last year as a leprechaun, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember that Mayor's Trophy game. It was at the South Amboy Waterfront. Uh oh. Right? That's when I killed Matt. I think I killed Maddox. <laughs> yep. <on> the <laughs> I think Maddox, Maddox caught. We kicked it off. Yep. We kicked it off to you him. Remember and Dion's, uh, my Uncle Darrell, Dion's yeah. dad was my coach. And he was like, yo, we're going to kick it to this dude. And we planned it. It was we were like, planned. We were going to kick it to a plan. No. <laughs> so, no. he, he like, I think he like jukes me or something. And I mm -hmm. slip. Mm -hmm. He runs this way, then tries to turn around, and I just clap him. Over. That that video is still on YouTube to this day. So, is it? So here, here's I've never background. Seen that. Here's background on that. The day before, we're doing special teams practice at JFK Park, Kennedy Park, right? Mm -hmm. My brother, who, who's also on the podcast, not today, but. Uh, and we're doing kickoffs, and Maddox is running down the sideline. My brother comes out of nowhere, smacks him. <laughs> helmet to helmet, laid out. Yeah. Like, dude, we don't know if he could play tomorrow. Casey just lays him out. So the next day, like he said, yeah. Maddox gets the kickoff. And, <laughs> I don't remember him juking anyone, but I just remember, like, I was on the sideline, and I heard him get Smack. Yeah, he was Gone. down. He was down for a minute. Like, he left on the really? ambulance like, and everything. Oh, I got up. Really? It was, oh my it was one of those hits where I got up and I was like, yo. It like you shoulder, no, it like, shoulder went limp. Like, and because he just turned back at me and I was just running full speed. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that was the same. That game I went crazy. I yeah. like slammed Colin. 
There's no crying Todd in this was game. The, like, yeah, we had a no bad team. No crying in this game. This one I was a, this becoming was, that. You know, he is a uh, pop yeah. Warner player. Yeah, you used to get Known <laughs> as a big crier. Yeah, but yeah. I was still scoring five touchdowns a game. Damn. It makes no sense. Yeah. yeah I had asthma. I didn't know how to control it. I was like, hey. It was a, <gasps> Yeah. I, I okay. didn't know I had asthma at the time. I couldn't breathe. I had, didn't have the asthma pump. Mm-hmm. So anytime I would score, it was always a long run. Mm. So then my lungs would get flared, and I didn't know how to control my breathing. So the first thing when you... You're in that situation. It's like if you're hyperventilated. Yeah. You get overwhelmed, so you didn't... Like, I wasn't crying because it hurt. It was mm-hmm. overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So nobody ever knows that. Like, I really had asthma, and I went to go get oh, tested. I, I before my freshman we, year. we had a high school game. He blocked mm-hmm. a field goal and scooped and scored it to the crib my senior to year. To win the game. Mm-hmm. To win the game. And he <laughs> had... Like, he couldn't even do, like, the interview, post-game interview, nothing, because... He had to, like, really control yeah. his breathing. And people wanted to tackle me. I'm like, bro, I can't breathe. I need to get off me. <laughs> I think I was one of them. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, I, I remember those days, like, that, that, those were good days. And like you said, Colin, he was on he was on the Panthers with yeah. us. He was like, we just didn't have a good team. They didn't, like, format it right. Like, Linwood, he was the best player that we had, but yeah. he was mm-hmm. playing under. Yeah. So if Linwood was up there, it'd be, it'd be a different game because in, in youth, like, youth football yep. back then, Bro, all you needed was speed. You needed one fast one person dude. and just give him a the toss yeah. or a jet and just let him go. That's all I did. I would just give it a ball, I'd run to the other side. If that <laughs> wasn't faster open, than everybody. If that didn't work, I'd spin around, go the other way. Just <laughs> exactly. He played, he played both sides of the ball. And the reason I remember that is because we did get down by the goal line at one point. I know we got smacked, but like we still scored a little bit. And this guy tries to blitz because he's playing safety, and I'm playing guard. I leveled him. I swear to God, yeah, he tried yeah. to blitz, and oh, I leveled him. I'll never yeah. forget that. I'll never forget that. You always remember those bit, like those plays that, like, yep. like, you get somebody good. Like it's a good feeling for you. You right. remember those. I don't like, think those, we scored on that, but that, I still leveled. That in high school was probably the best football I've ever played. Yeah, because it was no, it was carefree. It yeah. had no worry. Yep. I had to worry about, oh, the next film session. I had to worry about somebody taking my spot or you know the politics of football. That mm-hmm. was just like. You're playing with your friends. It's fun. You play like if the leprechauns and the Panthers would have came together through those years, we would have went to Florida every year. Every it been, every team. Probably, it. And like my, now they got it from Mighty Might, but it's Ten not years football. Later, football is not the same. From Mighty Might to Midgets, we would have went to we would have went to Florida every year. I Dude, agree. Think about all the all the kids that played. So you're you're like you got three years on me, two years on him. Mm-hmm. So if you think about from my grade, so 2012 class of 2012 to the class of 2016. Go four years prior to that. Like, you know, Pee Wee football. Yeah. We would have, like, destroyed. All those guys all those guys together just playing. Just think about it. It would have been on one team when I was younger, when I was on, I think, Pee Wee. I think the midget team was, like, um, on the Panthers. It was, like, Alex and Azeli. Oh, yeah. And then Daryl. Was Daryl on the, on the Panthers? Oh, shit. Daryl and D-Lon were Panthers, were right? Were Panthers. Yeah. I don't know if they played until high school. I know D-Lon did. D-Lon yeah. definitely played. D-Lon in did. In one, one year. Because then he played no, soccer, they, too. He might have played for South River. Or something like that, but I don't just know. putting not, everybody on those teams on that. that were in high school together, yeah, on the in in Pop Warner, it would have been crazy. Facts, it'd have been got, crazy. you got who else? They're lucky Linwood, they get the Picaro Bros, the Picaro oh, Bros, uh, monsters. Who dude. else we got? Uh, who who do we have? Uh, I mean, think about Dion. Dion, Dion, Zeke was a monster. Isaiah <laughs> oh my yeah, God, that was crazy. That's crazy. That's that's a lot of dogs right there. wild. So that that brings me back to like one of the things I want to talk about. The difference in like youth football today to when we played, like how do you feel about that? Soft. It's soft. That's, I think so. I think that's an understatement. Yeah, I mean, I understand with the whole concussion thing. You know, they're trying to prevent that. And me, I, I mean, I got like ten concussions from like all my years in college, and I can understand it to an extent. Mm-hmm. But football's still violent. Yeah. It's a violent sport, and mm-hmm. you're never gonna be able to take the violentness out of football. So it's more it's like I get the like. safe exactly. I get the safeness for the kids, but you can't prevent injury. Mm-hmm. It's gonna. It's it's a sport that's 100% injury prone. I feel like so many people are like just keeping their kids out of it. Yeah. To where a lot of people, a lot of kids who could, you know, be great football players, just don't even have the opportunity because their parents. Their are parents don't let them. It. Even high school kids aren't allowed to play. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. My kid ain't playing until he's probably in like seventh grade. Yeah. Seventh Not grade. Not playing tackle what football. What do you play? Flag. I don't think. I don't think honestly at the younger ages. There's no point of tackling mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there's so much time to learn how to tackle, and you're not going to learn at those young ages, so you're going to do it improperly, unsafely. It doesn't matter how much you teach a young kid yeah. how to tackle. How, they're going to go out there and throw their body at each other. Mm-hmm. It don't matter. So if if I'm a parent and I got a young kid, he's playing flag until – like there's so many flaggers that you can yeah. play up – 
up until a point, obviously high school, I don't want that to be your first time tackle. Yeah. Maybe like sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, you play tackle and then. But anywhere before that, those kids are not, I mean, it's just my opinion, but, you know, it's, it's tough because, you know, all these concussions and stuff come up. And the first thing you do now on the physical is, how's your head? Like, mm -hmm. have you ever got kicked up? Have you ever got knocked out? Because mm -hmm. the brain is the most important part of the body. Yeah. Yeah. Without it, we ain't nothing. So, and you see all these stories about people as they get older and in the, in the league. Like, I don't remember. I probably had four concussions when I was at Pop Warner, but never knew because there, no, there was no precautions. It yeah. was like, oh, shake it off, get back out there. Oh, you felt a little dizzy coming off the field. Yeah. And you, Dude, football, I used you to better get, get back in there. I used to get nosebleeds all the time. Oh, that's and cool. like... I never had, so like knock on wood, I yeah. hope there's wood in here, but <laughs> I never had like any major injuries in my life. My brother one time stuck like a, like a missile, Power Ranger missile in my ear and broke my eardrum. That's it. So like, thank God for that. But I remember <laughs> getting nosebleeds all the time really? up until I stopped playing football. I played freshman year and then sophomore year. I'm like, dude, I don't really want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Also, it wasn't like as fun for me anymore. Cause like, like you said, there's so many, like so much like favoritism and, and favorites and stuff like that. And I know, like, we're all from Cerebral. Like, I, that, this is how it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not just, like, it's not where just we are. That terrible, exactly. Yeah. But it is crazy, like, all, all these kids not playing. And I remember getting stuff like that. And I know tons of kids that were messed up from that and then started, you know, mm -hmm. using drugs and shit to, yeah. like... To cope with yeah. it and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's not a joke about. It's definitely some serious stuff. But flag football... I flag think football has, mm -hmm. is, is the thing now. In the, in the way football is right now and how it's all, like, fast pace offense based flag football helps these kids become elusive exactly. even the linemen you know linemen all these linemen you see in the nfl right now like are athletic freaks like the one dude just did like a jump split on high boxes coming out of the draft i From forgot who that Alabama. was yeah o'neal or, or something like that uh like, yeah, yeah yeah something Neil, like that yeah, Neil, yeah. he did some like jump split that flag football could be Can't could help that. the agility of these linemen so i mean i'm i'm all for it I'll have my kids play tackle a little early, earlier than 7th and 8th grade. <laughs> I feel like, so 7th, 8th grade is what, like 11, 12, right? So what, yeah, 11, 12, 13. 11. Yeah, I feel like 7th grade's good enough. Yeah. Like 12 years I know old. A need to be, you don't started. need to be tackling at 8, eight years old. No, 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 no shot, no shot. Like, I was tackling at 6. You should, you, the helmet's bigger than these kids. Especially, you got to rely on the coaches a little bit, too, like lining these kids up against and each other, doing Oklahomas or whatever. It's Angle just drills, like, not happening. My kid, nah. A lot of times, it's just dads coaching that don't really know. Yeah. Like, they go through the training, but... Well, I mean, you're coaching now, isn't there, yeah. like, a lot more, like, drills and, like, you know, clinics you need to go to to be, like, mm -hmm. you don't need to be certified now? Or, like, yeah, so we have to get, like, a heads up uh certification mm -hmm. basically taking like a, a course like it's like a couple it takes like a couple hours and mm -hmm. it's just kind of going over the precautions of how to tackle keeping the head up rolling now mm -hmm. like we were taught bite the football yeah whether literally. your head is down or up and drive your feet into yep. and get that guy into the ground now it's head to the side head up you know you want to roll hit a little lower than we were taught so there's definitely things that we as high school coaches and above have to take um, course wise and I guess it's you know I agree with it and mm -hmm. we want to we want to be able to teach ourselves as much as we can because we don't want to hurt our players right. health is everything that's I mean I agree with that I just remember it's like wrap low put your head towards the ball yep. and that's it I feel like you still be taught to but wrap the, up low if you, you we take off your feet they're not moving yeah we definitely wrap up it's now it's just like very minor tweaks. They just—it's more all head. Everything mm -hmm. stays the same. You wrap up, grab they claw. The the they just want the head out. So what were you teaching at, at your camp? What's what's your favorite thing to teach? I was just like hit the pad. <laughs> <laughs> he was hey. just having them run at the pad and hit it. Kids, those kids at my camp, I was just like, let's just have fun at mm -hmm. that point, you know, doing some drills that will help them. But like, and then I like kind of like the coaches that I had, like the guest coaches, like Jeremy, um, all of them. Just let them run their lines. Um, like, obviously wrapping up mm -hmm. and just rolling when they grab the pad. You know, once you get used to, you know, rolling, not knowing that the ground ain't going to hurt you, it's tackling. It's easy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the other drills that we had was more of, like, athletic-based, not mm -hmm. really sports-based because we had girls there. Mm -hmm. We had people that were soccer players. It wasn't just for football okay. players. So it was, like, more athletic. You know, you had your football drills, but then we had athletic drills. Yeah, like I ran like a, a little agility drill, just okay. running to the line, coming back and stuff like that. Chin did the tackling. His trainer did like bag, bag drills. drills. So like it, it was a good mix of like football and yeah. the kids were running out a good time. I mean, a that's what it's all about, really. And we really. missed the rain by like 20 minutes. Yeah, like, oh, so close. 
So what Almost is like, that. what's your, so obviously you coach now. Mm -hmm. This guy's in the NFL over here. Mm -hmm. I'll go with you first. What's your favorite drill to like teach or like see kids like get involved in and, and do? The I think for me, just to kind of like, it's more of a skill position drill. Like mm -hmm. I like seeing the kids compete doing one-on-ones. Um, do I think one-on-ones helps defensive scheme? No. No. I hate scheme. Big like, scheme guy. Like huh? in, yeah, big scheme. <laughs> big scheme guy. Big scheme guy. We were on a three four. If anyone was wondering, but <laughs> I like the one on ones because I think it kind of it shows a little athletic ability by mm -hmm. the receiver and the DB, and it kind of gets them to compete against each other. Like all these kids go to these camps and combines, the colleges are running and stuff like that, and they'll do one on ones to kind of see if they can move. I like doing that for them. But, like, if I was at my practice, no way. So I'm what's, like, the ones. most important drill to be, like, all right, this kid's, like, legit? Like, what do you see that gets you excited? Like, what drill? You see a kid, I don't know, do an angle drill, and mm -hmm. the dude's obviously faster, faster than him, but he takes that great angle and hits him, like. Like a, like a tackling drill? Anything, man. Like, what? You mm. see a kid do good at a drill, and they're like, oh, this kid's probably not going to do that good. And you see him, you're like, wow, like, surprise me. I like agility drills. Okay. Uh, so, like, any type of bag drill, any type of cone drill, change of direction, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because change of direction is the biggest thing. I'm a defense coach, so I love, and running back. So, anything change of direction-wise, if you can hit some, hit a hole and bounce and go, that's where I'm like, ooh, we got, we got a little something on some wiggle with these kids. That's what, okay. for me, like, change of direction drills. Right, so when when you're in training camp coming up soon, what's one drill you're like, oh shit, I don't want to do that. One drill, I hate <laughs> one on ones. Yeah. I play defense and I play nickel, so uh -huh. like the slot receivers, all they do is want to make three different moves before they actually get into the route. Mm -hmm. So it's like unrealistic. You have no line, and if you do like a a hide route, which is like just an underneath route, they're running through the offensive line most of the time with okay. in, in one on ones. So that's probably the worst drill. You know, it gets you comfortable being out there by yourself, not depending on people. But when I'm out there. In like a seven or seven team period, I know where my help is. Mm -hmm. One on ones, you could run different routes, and you think, oh, because you caught a slant, you you won the rep. Mm -hmm. No, I'm playing outside leverage because I'm trying to practice for mm -hmm. getting the team. I think one on ones is probably the worst thing known to man. Do you do them a lot at practice? We do them every every day. day. <laughs> oh wow! Every day, and they run the same. <laughs> and then they're like, I'm and like, then they bro. point at you, and they're I'm like, like, oh, I got him, I got yeah, him. We got fans at practice, so they make you look bad. And I'm like, bro, unless you run a go ball. Don't come up here and do an option route in one-on-ones. Because right. I'm wrong either way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so who don't you want to guard if you're doing these trails at camp? I'm a dog, so I'll guard anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take nah, that. but my dogs, you know, we, we give each other mm -hmm. good You're work, getting each so, other better? Yeah. Like, I would say the hardest person to guard, because I play, so I don't play the outside, so mm -hmm. I don't go against DJ. You know, Robbie comes in the slot sometimes, Probably. but um, CJ Saunders. Wall, mm. uh, free agent rookie last year. Okay, is probably the smoothest, like Cole Beasley type, like Ooh. like Wes Welker, Wes like Walker. small, boom, 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 gets out of route, smooth, yeah. smooth dude. I would say he's one of them. And then obviously when Robbie gets in there, the rocket step is crazy, like his little, and he takes mm. off. It's crazy. He's fast. He's quick and fast, which is dangerous. Quick and somebody fast. can be fast, tall dude. Too. Somebody yeah. can be fast and it's like <clears throat> easy to guard them. But when you're quick and you get out of breaks quick and then you take off. It's the hardest Different thing story. Yeah. Changes the game. Damn. So I also wanted to ask you, like, you just mentioned that you're playing nickel, you're playing inside. Your rookie year, you're running the ball a little bit. Well, yeah. What's that all about? So what do they got you doing there? <laughs> rookie year was tough. You know, COVID happened. Uh -huh. So it was like we couldn't bring in a lot of people during the week. Because usually, like now I notice, like, on Tuesdays, there's, like, 10 people trying out for the team. Because mm -hmm. injuries happen the week before. People go on IR. People get cut. So they try and fill those spots. Mm -hmm. So rookie year, we couldn't do none of that. So I got there. They were like, because Coach Rule was Temple's coach when yeah. I was in high school. So he recruited me at running back. You know, I was running back. I didn't start playing really DB until I got to college. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was just at pure athleticism in high school. And then pure. <laughs> it go off God's ability. God gave me that ability. So um, rookie year, they were like, yo, we want to try out at running back. I'm like. I ain't played running back since senior year of high school. I'm like, all right, this is six years later, but let's mm -hmm. get it. So I get the ball, start doing some drills. They're like, okay. So then I would wear a different colored jersey. So, like, mm -hmm. everybody, defensive being black, offensive being white, I'd be out there with an orange jersey on because <laughs> I had to go both sides. Mm -hmm. so. And then I never thought I would get in. I think it was I Christian got, Christian got, got hurt. Mike Davis was kind of banged up, and they were like, 
yo, Miles, you're taking all running back reps this week. I'm like, what? What's going on? Like, what? Tell me what's going on. So then we go to it was versus Saints in the dome. I'm like scared, so I'm playing both sides this time. They're like, yo, we need you on defense too. So I got to go to both meetings. It was crazy. Get out there. I, the day before, my name is on because they we script the first 15 plays. Mm-hmm. My name was on the, the script three times. I'm like, and two of them were fakes. Two of them <laughs> jog off. You know what I'm saying? There you go. The third one, I was getting a toss. I was like, <laughs> got, and then they called it in the game, and I was like, dear God, here we go. Jab step, took the toss, nothing but black jerseys. I'm like, all right, where, where do I go? And all I heard was my coach, was Coach Rule, we don't run out of bounds. So I was like, I planted my foot, just tried to get vertical, and big lineman just fell on top, and I was like, yeah, let's go back on defense. Damn. <laughs> So what do they got you doing now? Now you're just strictly defense? Yeah, now I'm just strictly safety. I'm, I'm playing. Emergency running back. No, no, no. Not anymore. No, no. That, that, Save that, the body, right? That life is over. Like, it's past. Um, moving to boundary safety now. Okay. More of like a box safety. And then playing nickel. I think I'll play a little bit of dime. We'll see. It's Because I looked up your stats. You had, what, 38 tackles last year. Yeah. They're this, using you a lot more. Yeah. So, I, I got injured. First game of the season, dislocated. Clubber Lang, right? Yeah, I was club for like. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I was club for like eight games. <laughs> Did you, didn't you pick one off with the club? I dropped. He dropped it. I dropped it versus the Saints. <laughs> we don't let him. But we, then the we week after, sure I, I, okay. I got my first sack against Tom Brady with the club. That's so, dope. So it was. Uh, it was you a say good time. Any trash talk, Tom at all? No, nah, I got it respectfully, and I think I just. Ran off and started doing you were, my dance. Yeah, you did your dance right as soon as you got up. Like, I was like... I'm surprised and then I was Tom like, get retires. the fuck off the field. And then Tom retires a couple and weeks later. And then he, goes, he goes to me, he's like, you know, I just had to sack Tom Brady into retirement. <laughs> but, yeah, this yeah, year happens. is strictly, strictly defense. Strictly focusing on... So what are your job. goals for this year, then? Goals for this year is stay healthy. The, bet, the way to stay in the league is to be available. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you guys stay healthy. Stay healthy throughout the season. And then just build on what I... Laid the platform. I laid the platform down the first and t- first second year. Now it's to keep building, and I'm all about the team. Like if the team, if the team needs me at running back, I'm gonna go play. So I just want to be the most valuable guy on our team. If you're valuable, you'll stay a long time. Um, if it's special teams, I don't care what position. If it's special teams, running down. You the almost runner, you almost made Pro Bowl as a special team yeah, in your rookie, rookie year. Years. Yeah, that was tough. I was like, I mean, literally, it don't matter what position. But like, mm-hmm. if they need me to play, like last year, I played corner one game. Versus, I was guarding Pitts, guarded him at corner, came in the slot. I was playing backer basically, on first down. So it was like, hey, whatever helps the team, I'm I'm willing to do. So just being really, my goal is to just be available. Just be available, be healthy. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> you came in the league as an undrafted free agent. Yeah. Now you're here, year three. Year three. You can have a big year. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. So how how did all that work out? Like, what was your feeling after like you go through the draft? You were, what, projected as, what, maybe a 6th or a 7th round So, pick? yeah, I had got talks about 6th, 7th round, but then my agent was like, you know, you didn't have a pro day because COVID. I didn't have I didn't have a pro day. I didn't have a combine invite. I didn't have a senior a bowl invite. It was fear to get drafted. I didn't yeah. have any of those things to check off the mm-hmm. boxes to see how teams I would play because I had dislocated my ribs the last game. I mean, I mean yeah, broke my ribs the, um, the last game of the season at Ole Miss versus Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't go to any bowl games. So I was like, all right. Then they did invite me to the combine, and then COVID happened five days before my pro day, so I had no, like, basically nothing to go into. Just film, they're all looking at. Yeah, so I was like, hey, it is what it is. Um, during that time, it was, it wasn't even stressful. I wasn't even stressed. I was like, yo, whatever team gives me an opportunity, I'm like, I'm rocking out with it. You know, I had about like, like six, seven teams that called right towards like the sixth, seventh round mm-hmm. to say like, yo, we have no picks left. We'll get you in free agency if you want to come here. And I just felt most comfortable with the Panthers because of the people I knew. I knew I was going to get the best opportunity was COVID. So I'm like, these people know me already. Yeah. They knew me since I was 13. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm 20, 23 at the time. And being able to, you know, go into the best situation, not always about where you want to go, is where you need it. You know what I'm saying? And it was so I many. I feel like di- it's worked out. Exactly. It's been. And there was, the year before, it was a bunch of vets that, you know, retired and all that stuff. So there was no, like, depth. Mm-hmm. So you go where. Even though we drafted five guys before me, I ended up starting at nickel. So I, I feel like I chose the right position and work, you know, from Cerebral. We work for everything mm-hmm. we do. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Blue collar. Right there. That's yeah. crazy. Man. So uh, you said a bunch of teams called you. You ended up with the Panthers. When you're there, what was, like, one thing that you're like, 
you were just excited for? Just besides being there, like who did you want to meet? Like what did you want to do? Like who did you want to impress? Obviously the coaches, but who did I want to impress? I wanted to. I really wanted to impress myself. At first, it was just like, you know, you dream about this since I was like six. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to impress myself and basically show myself that I can do this. You know, if you can't impress yourself first, you can't impress nobody later. So, um, but the one, the, the best thing I was, was probably my, I think my second or third game starting was going out there, night game, eight o'clock on a Saturday. I still remember going out to Green Bay, playing against Aaron Rodgers and I'm Rainbow. blitzing and he's like calling my name out. I'm like, yo, bro, relax. I just, got, <laughs> it's only my third day out here. Like, relax. <laughs> so being able to go up against like people that you watch all the time and then that, and then also, when I moved to running back, being in the same meeting room with Christian McCaffrey, mm -hmm. at the time, I was a rookie. I ain't no, no, no. I'm like, yeah, I got a fanboy moment real quick. Yo, Christian, yo, bro, I appreciate you, bro. Like, <laughs> and then, like, all right, let's get back to the meeting. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Those two people. I would say those were the two mm -hmm. special moments. Man, that's crazy. I mean, you're living your dream. I feel like I'm living my dream. I know you just uh, stepped down at, at Kane, mm -hmm. and now you're back at with the Bombers. Yes, sir. So what's, what's your plan with that? You know, um... My goal is to be a head, head coach in the next two to three years. Um, Any ideas where? I would love to stay at Cerebro. I'd love Who, to stay home. Is it still Began? Yep, Coach Began is still. He ain't still. going anywhere. We, we'll see. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping in the next couple of years some things get moved around um, and I can step in there. But if I can't, I'm not opposed to going somewhere else and then hopefully one day bringing it back to the blue. Um, but definitely trying to be a head coach in the next two to three years. I feel like Sarahville, it's like so crazy. Just known as like a football powerhouse. Yep. I feel like we fell off for a little bit and then got back there and just, it's like kind of stagnant. We haven't like mm -hmm. improved since. Do you feel like high school football, it has anything to do with like the limitations we have on practices and, and hitting and stuff like that. And just like the overall quality of the athletes, like mm -hmm. high school athletes now, like, I feel like everyone that graduates, you know, two years later, you look back and you're just like, damn, they suck. Like, I'm gone. Yeah. It's just, like, not the same. And you're watching it. Like, I, I've, I've been to a few Bomber games since I graduated. That's six years ago. And I went and I'm like, damn, like, it's just so much slower. Yeah. Like, I've, I just feel like the, the level of play is just not what it used down, to be. A little down, right? Yeah. So, I think we all say that. So, like, when we were in high school, it was like the guys above us were like, oh, you guys are different. You're softer, you're slower, you guys aren't as good at us, mm -hmm. you're smaller. But then when we get to be them and we look back at it, we're saying the same exact yep. things that everybody before us seems. Yeah. So I, I think that this generation is a tough generation to coach though. Um, you know, so social media. Yeah, it's very social media based. Like a lot of thing a lot of these kids are doing the wrong types of training. You know, they're just worrying about like things how it, that, looks, how it looks good on like Twitter and Instagram when they should be really focusing on like the fundamentals of like training, yep. you know, like me and Miles run um, the athlete training at Limitless Fitness that yep. he owns, and all our kids are learning like the fundamentals of running. I think kids need to kind of like get out the house and get into like a training program that we're offering or that other gyms are offering because mm -hmm. that's going to kind of get you to the next level. And the guy and the kids that want it will go and yeah. they'll find that training, mm -hmm. but it's the kids that don't want it. There's more kids that don't want it now. There's more kids that want to sit at home because, I mean, nowadays you can sit at home and make money playing the video game. It's crazy. People, I think kids nowadays think waking up and going to practice is enough. Mm -hmm. like, it's not enough. It's not enough. Like, everybody's doing that. Every every football player that you know wakes up and has to go to practice. Yep. Everybody's doing the same drills that you're doing. It's the stuff that you do. Like, if I was to only practice an hour a day, or work out an hour a day, that's seven hours a week. That's not enough. Nope. Like, there's times when I was in high school like even if it wasn't with a trainer I was at least outside with my boys like yo we're about to go hit the field do some even if it wasn't do some W drill we at least knew it wasn't Instagram worthy but it was mm -hmm. drills that would make me better at playing DB drills of seeing vision and cutting and doing mm -hmm. all this stuff it wasn't the you know ah, how fast can my feet go boom, 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 yeah boom. you know some it's good for some, some things stuff that, that's yeah. good in some aspects but, that's yeah. just like putting an illusion out there and there's a lot of stuff like in any any anything you do really like cards like people just be posting like the good stuff to hit right mm -hmm. you, you hit a lot of garbage like yeah you're hitting cards that are worth a dollar and probably dollar, more garbage right then exactly like your odds to make it anywhere whether it's pulling a good card or 
making it to the NFL or making it to college or something mm -hmm. like that, the odds are always against you. And it's Absolutely. always about who outworks the next person. Mm -hmm. And one thing I remember that you used to say all the time, and I remember you tweeting this shit all the time. You're like, today's a day, a great day to be great. Great day to be great. It was says that all the time. It, I, I one time for two years straight tweeted it. Mm -hmm. And then Twitter, yep. finally, <laughs> Twitter finally made it where you can pin a tweet. So I just pinned it online. You probably online. did it for you. You just retweet it every day? What? The pin? <laughs> yeah, just redo it. I just want everybody to see it now. <laughs> but I did that for like two years straight. Yeah, when mm -hmm. I was coaching at Cerebral. It was probably your senior year because yep. I coached your senior year. Yeah, you had Bertrand yep. and uh, all those guys. Correy, Aunt Picaro. Uh, hip Hip Correy. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> he just won a championship. He did? Oh, arena. he won. Where is he? Arena, really? I think arena, it was Kansas. Selena, Kansas. Kansas. Good for him. Yeah, yeah he just won a He kind of got like railed by the whole COVID thing yeah. too. Mm -hmm. If he, bro, if I think he would have got at least an invite oh. to camp, but COVID, yeah, COVID screwed it up yeah. for a lot of people. Because then a lot of kids stayed an extra year, so then it was ma it was a massive a load of, mm -hmm. of people his year. Yeah, that's true. Shit, I mean, you do really see all these stories of, like people at work and each other. Like, I watched the Kurt Warner movie. I just met him last week too, oh, or nice. two weeks ago. He was really cool. His movie was really like you know just grinding and grinding. What's the name and of you that get movie? that up. Uh, I just like seen somebody untold. watching this. What is it? Uh, I don't know the top of my head. I just seen somebody watching, but it did look like a. It's not good a football movie. movie. It's more. More of like a story. It's tell. a story yeah. about his life, like him being the working at a grocery store and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Like his story is going to the arena league, playing in the arena league. Yup, I think was Jay Gruden his coach, or he played with Jay Gruden or something. Something like, like that. Because Jay Gruden was a uh, head coach in the arena league before he became uh, OC. In the league, I mean, you always have the John Gruden connection too, oh, though. Yeah, that don't that, hurt. <laughs> that having your brother John Gruden probably helps. I mean, a at this point, probably not a good thing. But <laughs> back then, <laughs> yeah, back then when he was getting in it, definitely. That's great. And like other movies, like Giannis just had that movie come yeah, out. I saw him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a Disney Plus guy, so definitely. I haven't watched it yet, but Bo Cruz. I mean, okay, yeah, there's another one, man. And when the opportunity mm -hmm. happens, I mean, you gotta you, you gotta, gotta take advantage of it. Yeah, because they don't come often. Mm. It's very true. That is very true. So, also, I want to ask both of you this. Let me see. I'm going to pick a position. You're a defense guy, and obviously you're on defense, so fuck it, we'll do defense. Okay. <laughs> Top three safeties of all time. Ooh. Ooh. In so, order or just three? Just, you could, you could name three. And then when you name the three, then we'll think of an order. All right. You going first, you want me to go first? You want to go, I'll go one, you go one? Free safety and, and, and strong, strong safety, safety, just both. All time? All time. Sean Taylor's up in the top three. Is that your person you're picking right now? Yeah, I mean, we could pick the same person, right? You're picking... Yeah, go for it. He's in the top three, I'm sorry. I mean... I'm not top three of all time yeah, safety. I, don't, I, don't, like, Sean, I understand where you're coming from, not from long who enough. the person is, but top three. Dog. I can name two people off the top of my head. Ed Reed. Ed Reed, Troy Palomalo. Yeah. All right. Those would be my three. And then Sean Taylor? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a personal preference I'll question, go. right? Who you got? I, I'll go first. I'll go. Yeah. Brian Dawkins, Oof. Ronnie Lott. And I just forgot the other one. You said it. You said it. Say, say your three Ed again. Reed, Troy Ed Reed, Those three. Ronnie Lott cutting oh. your finger off to play a game. I think he played Love longer him. than anyone, too. He's like mm -hmm. 15, 16 and years. And made less money than all of them, probably. Yeah, especially the time he played. Yeah. yeah. I would say Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu, Miles Hart. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, uh, third one, I would say, I know it's not, y'all can't agree on this, but Cam but we don't Chancellor. Have Cam Chancellor. Mm, I mean, Super Bowl. The boom, Legion of Boom. Yeah. He was the leader. He created that. Because he was, I mean, he. so I think Cam Chancellor somewhat changed the game for safeties. Right? Because you People look at can't safeties. Because of him. He's a you big look at safety safeties too. now, like you look at Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin is just as big as Cam. Cam Chancellor was like a big, linebacker yeah. or tall. a defensive lineman playing safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He could run as fast as a receiver, can hit as hard as a linebacker. And that, you didn't really start, you didn't, you didn't see safeties like that really until after he, yeah. so I think he had. All a, the safeties before him were like Edward, like, um, I mean, um, Earl six Thomas. One, six yeah. two and under. Like Earl Thomas, Thomas was like a little smaller, faster, yeah. shiftier guy. But you didn't see those like hard hitters, like a, mm -hmm. like a Jeremy Chan. I mean, Ed Reed was a different breed. Ed, Ed Reed, Reed is probably crazy. the best safety. I of think all time. He, I'd put him at one. I would put I would put Ed Reed at one. Ed Reed at one. I, I love put, the Ronnie Lott pick. I mean, I, don't I think love the yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie Lott pick. pick. Was that's tough. I mean, all time. I mean, that's tough. He's got, he I would Ronnie it. Lott too. Mm -hmm. Over Troy. Yeah. Troy was out there creating his own plays. Like it didn't matter. Yo, what he did when he would jump over the jump center over, and time the snap. They made a rule ridiculous. because of him. Yeah. Like you can't do that anymore. 
and he had the hair. He was just different. All right, I got, I got two more for you. We're going to do two. We're going to do one more defense, one more offense. Okay. Right. Got to go cornerback. All time? All time. You can't disrespect Dion. No, you cannot. Mm, you got to go Dion. Because the he's, the tre- he's a trendsetter. I think because of the stuff he did mm. while he played puts him in the top category. Yeah. Yeah. Which corners are, <laughs> corners nowadays you are acting have, like Dion. Yeah, you got to have You think you can mom. play baseball like him? You were good. Nah. <laughs> he was ass at baseball. What? Like, he was no, just you, you, They tried to get you to play baseball just to steal mm-hmm. bases. And you would say, no, but go come play baseball. I would. I would have... I would have been the best player on your team. Me and Christian would have had a run for a Nah, run. Christian Shut is filthy. Up. If I would have no, 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 if I would have kept playing baseball and kept yeah. playing like I played like football, trained a little, played I would have been. I would have been a baseball. Because you only played little league, right? I played one year at River Dogs. We were played. on we were on one team. Really? We had a crazy team. It was me, him, Pete Soprowski, oh, Gambardella, Josh Gunera, bro. We were filthy. That's a fire team. Was that the team? I don't Isa- think he played. Was Isaiah? No. <laughs> was I, was Isaiah Copes on that team too? I, yeah, yeah. And Isaiah, 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 Isaiah's, Isaiah's excuse was, I can't see the ball. Bro, go get glasses. Like, yeah, he couldn't keep He struck he, out he for us to lose the championship. He struck so he out for us to lose the championship. Yep. Did he? Yes. He was outfield and he could not hit. Could not all. hit. But when he got on base, he would score. Yeah. But right. he had to get on base. Yeah. We were like, Isaiah, he was looking we were like for, Isaiah, don't he's, swing. He was the right fielder, right? He had to play the two innings in right field and they had to hope nobody hit it to him. <laughs> Pretty much. That's crazy. All right, so corner, I'm going Dion. Dion. Yep. Jalen Ramsey. Okay. Uh, too soon. Too, too soon. soon. Too, too soon. soon. I don't think anybody's locked down premier wide receivers like Jalen Ramsey. Right? Wide receivers nowadays are better than wide receivers. Revis? He's class of 2016. I I don't think it's long enough. Not long. All right, I'll take him off. I'll take Revis? him. Revis. Yeah. Yeah. He's, up he's there. in my top three. Yeah. I'll put Revis. I'm waiting. I don't think you guys are gonna say the one I'm gonna say. Hold on, let me think about this. My third one, I'll go. I'm curious. Damn. Cornerbacks, I think the hardest position to play in the NFL. What do, you, what do you think? Absolutely. Other than quarterback, other than quarterback, other than quarterback, other than quarterback it's the hardest. Yeah. Absolutely. Dude, you get. I mean, shit, people can a make you look like a. Oh my god, they can make you spin. Yep. Who you going? Who who you saying? All right, so one guy that I don't think you guys think of, Champ Bailey. Champ Bailey did it a long time. And he I'm was playing, great. I'm putting Woodson over him. Ooh, I don't I'm know. Playing what? You playing Champ Bailey? Champ over? Bailey is Champ Bailey, man. I'm putting a King to leave over Champ Bailey. Oh, yeah. All right. A King no. to leave was out there about, snatching chains. What about me? Gilly? Is he still playing? Nah, he's still playing. Stephon Gilmore. His fall off was kind of. That's his dog. <laughs> hey. When did he get drafted? Thir- 13, 14? Steph. It- Nobody gets paid like that in their late years. <laughs> I he's know. He's getting paid I get as, it. if he's young. Yeah. For two years. He just got that two-year deal from the Colts. But make, he on, just got man. the bag. I'm putting, Char- I'm putting Woodson. Woodson? Woodson? I, res- Woodson. I respect Woodson. But I, I got to put Champ in the top three. I'm just saying. I like You're talking about somebody who won the Heisman. I like Dion and I like Revis. I don't know about my third. Uh, if I could pick Jalen, I'm putting Jalen in mine. So. I, love, I love Ty Law. I, just, I don't think he's top three, but I love Ty Law. You know you're good when you were in the Darrell. NFL Street game. And Ty Law was nice in the NFL yep. Street. Underrated player, I really feel like. I Ty would Law. agree. Jalen Ramsey's going to go down as the best corner to ever play the game. If he stays healthy. I don't know about best ever. Could he make top five, top three? Maybe. Bro, those guys this that I great. just named. I I'm this. saying that because of the the premier wide receivers we have in the league now. The I get wide it. wide receivers that... Revis, he was guarding, uh, he he was guarding like Randy, Randy Moss. Moss. Randy Moss ain't fast like Tyreek Hill, ain't quick like okay, Tyreek okay. Hill. Still I said Randy Tyreek Moss. Hill. I ain't say nobody else. Randy Moss was fast, but okay, Moss and people. But the probably the hardest person he had to guard was probably Megatron, which is probably Shit, one of the I, best. I guess we gotta boy. go top three wide receivers. There now. he goes. I asked OJ <laughs> Howard. I asked uh, fuck it, let's say? go. You did Oh, I All watched right. this, so I know who OJ said. He said T.O. Randy and Megatron, right? And he also actually so, asked yeah. him if or did you, you said Megatron. I said Megatron. Let me let me let me run it back. You think you think he is. I'll check real quick. He said that you he you asked him if T.O. could play football. Oh, he said Jerry. No, I think yeah. it was Jerry. It was Jerry. Oh, Jerry Rice, undeniably the goat. It nope. was Jerry. That OJ Howard's was bro. Jerry. Number one's Jerry Rice. No the guy dis- did it for 20 years. No disrespect to him. Oh my god. He I was agree. guarding people that looked like Mike. People that were guarding him were looking like Mike. He was catching football, nah, so he was I'm 42 not, in the NFL. Yo, I'm locked down. Jerry Come Rice on. is a goat, man. 
He didn't do anything crazy. He just was consistent and did his thing. I listen, I love Calvin Johnson. I'm a Lions fan. I got Calvin Johnson somewhere on a wall over here. Calvin Johnson, if I wasn't a, like Jerry Rice is a go. I don't you can't argue that. That's just like so you think I, Jerry, think, I don't I, hold on. You think Jerry Rice would do that to the defensive backs <sighs> nowadays? To this on this day, him playing now, will he do the same thing? Closest what? player to Jerry Rice, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald was doing it. At an all-time high right now? Right now, nah, no. no. But bro, he caught he had 800 yards in his age, what, 38 season? Larry was like Who that. even plays sort of 38 Larry anymore? Was like so who that. so all right, and you got, you got Jerry teams, Rice. Man. So I wanna know who you're picking. Jerry Rice. Right now, if they were to play, if you were to line <laughs> Jerry Rice up, you got Jerry All right. Rice. All right. Everybody sitting up for this J- one. Jerry Rice. Okay. DeAndre Hopkins. Okay. Or hmm, who I want to go right here. Or um Devontae Adams. Who you picking? Who do I want to guard? No, who are Who's... you picking to be your star wide receiver of your team? You're a GM, you like, I got these three people. Jerry Rice. <laughs> Jerry Rice is Jerry known as Rice? the GOAT by a- everywhere. It's like, nah. you ask anyone, it's like not even like a thing. It's like Jerry Rice is the GOAT. You watch Jerry Rice? D- yeah. You watch highlights. You, you, uh, we was he, not more. He played until 05, uh, so he- I watched the last couple years. <laughs> Yo, at, at 5, you, were, you was watching wrestling. You wasn't watching no football. No, nah, I would have been 8 and 05. So, you wasn't yes. watching no Saturday I started football. watching I, was then. I remember watching Jerry on the Raiders. Yep. Was he like His that? His last year was on the well, Seahawks. When you watch him, was he like that? We talking prime time? Was Are we he, talking no, no, no. Answer, their prime though? answer the question. When you were watching football, was Jerry Rice like that? That's was, like, you mean was Jerry Rice a diva? No. No. That's like me saying. Wasn't a diva. That, that's like me saying. Ever. That's like me saying, oh, Barry Sanders is the best running back. He is. He's a GOAT. <laughs> you I can never, tell Barry Sanders is a GOAT? I can't. I honestly can't say people are the GOAT if I never watched you live. Every generation has their GOATs. Has their top three. I can't say. I see what you're saying. You, can you look can't at the say stats somebody. Too. Yes, I see what you're saying, can but lie. at the same time, we're stats. talking all time. So, so all right. So it's like all saying. Time. Let me ask you this. At one then. time, Julian Edelman would have been the top wide receiver because of the stats get patented by the little. He never even had a thousand yard season. But he was a top five. He was a top ten wide receiver when he was in his prime. He's a. He's great. In the no shot. Great in the playoffs, Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman wasn't all a right, top. This, this question right here is going to prove my argument. <clears throat> Barry Sanders or Emmitt Smith. I never watched even. I can't say. Okay, I'm but based on stats, like one. you said, based you on said stat- stats lie. Emmitt Smith, all stats. All right, so listen. If to this. I was running behind that deep offensive line Smith? that he had, I'd have went for five thousand yards. <laughs> <Yeah>. You're crazy. <laughs> that what? They was, was paying crazy. people. Every everybody on that team was a millionaire. All right, so it's, here's they had here, no salary cap. Here are the stats real quick, because I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to your oh, point. You're saying the, the that card stats. Man about to drop out. Yeah, you 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 argue with the wrong person. Emmitt Smith, right? Yeah. 15 years as a running back in the NFL. All-time leading record, almost 18,000 yards, yeah. right? So, you know, 18,000 divided by 15, what's that, like, like 1,100 yards a season, 1,200? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Barry Sanders, right? From 1989 to 1998, played 10 fucking seasons, right? 15,269 yards. That's 1,500 yards a season. Who are you taking at that point? Edward Smith. <laughs> so just, ignore him. just ignore him at this point. But like I like I said, me personally, when I pick, when people ask me who are your top people, I only pick from my generation because that's the only okay. people I know. Right. Like you're different because you you know you're 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 into like the whole stats shit, behind yeah. behind the scenes like the cards and being able to know uh-huh. people's stats. But me as a person who watch football, I only can pick people that I watch because I only know their game. If I watch if I watch highlights, that's your best plays. Okay. It's the best plays you ever did. Okay. You got to finish now, the I'm list, then. If I, huh? Finish, finish Sean finish Alexander, list. let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We talk, what are we talking, wide receivers? No, running backs now. Back running backs, backs right now. Running backs? Massage <laughs> <laughs> Tiki, Tiki Barber. Oh, my God. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I was about to say. I was about to say. I was just playing. I was just playing. I was just playing. Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch is one of them. I respect that. Marshawn Lynch. Beast um, mode. I'm going to go, dang, running backs is such a turnover. Um, it's tough Jer- to be successful in the NFL. The running bus, backs. Jerome Bettis. Of all time? I, you're saying mine. Okay, like okay, you said, you okay, last okay. 20 years, the fucking 2000s. <laughs> oh, I can't name, bro. I don't know. Frank Gore, AP. Okay, AP. AP. Start naming sure. them. I'll, I'll Derrick say- Henry. No. Does he have enough? But 
<laughs> but Jalen, but Jalen, if Jalen can't be said, no, 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 I'm not gonna say Derrick Henry, but like right he, now, he would be up Derrick there. Henry. How was tackling yeah, him? Like, Frank Gore has sixteen thousand yards. Oh. Frank Gore. He's also different. cool as fuck. You like stats? And Frank you Gore like played stats. forever. I hate yeah. stats. He's also healthy. He played Very forever. True. Very true. Frank Gore played a long time. Yep. And stayed healthy. His last fun fact: his last carry in the NFL. He tore something, and he didn't even know he had 16,000 yards. I brought that up to him. He had no clue. Really? Yep. He goes, oh, wow. shit, I didn't know that. He goes, good thing I didn't go back out there. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, AP. You gotta AP, go AP. AP's gotta AP. be up there. AP, definitely. AP gotta be up there. Another nice dude. He's cool. Yeah. AP, I would definitely say AP. Uh, I'm drawing blanks here, too. Well, I can't say no Emmitt Smith. Or I can't say Barry Sanders. I was talking last 20 years. Emmitt Smith did play until 2000. <laughs> but look, they start naming it. When the years they played, I'm like, I wasn't watching football in 2005. No kizzy. No? I mean, Sean Alexander, I wouldn't say that, but, like, he had, he had a crazy, like, four years. Yeah, there's a lot of running backs, I think, that had a they great, like, long. four to six years span of being, Jamal like, Lewis. the best at the position. And then... Falling off after that, mm-hmm. so like running running backs probably I would say running backs one of the hardest positions to give a top mm-hmm. because it's there's such a turnover because the turnover and they you know the the average in, uh, time in the NFL is what two years now two it was three yeah. right and running backs it's probably not much more than that so running backs got to be the hardest to give a top list. Who's your to. favorite player right now in the NFL? Your top right three now? players right now. Ooh. No position, just your top three. Like you like I go to bat for these guys. That I think are just That are just like, dogs that you like, I, I'll put my stamp on them. I'll put this whole building on their back. I got healthy, it. healthy too. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Mm. Lola, the Lions don't really have anyone to root for. I mean, I love the That's Lions. That's a sad franchise to watch. Bro. Yeah, but they got <laughs> MCDC and he wants to bite kneecaps. And Dan stuff. Campbell, I... I, if I got to pick a coach, I'm going Dan Campbell. I fucking love Dan Campbell. I'd He's also through. a former Lions tight end. Yeah. All right, Stafford. Stafford. I'd kill someone for Matthew Stafford. Okay. I love Stafford. Stafford. Kill someone for him. Who you got? Dude, that's my quarterback. That's I don't care he's if he's on the hands. Man. Uh, shit. Who else? Dude, I mean, I don't really like Frank. I mean, Frank Ward's not in it anymore, but that's one guy that I, I love no matter what. Who's still around? Who's you still around? You need two more people. The building is hurting Matthew Stafford's back right now. Like, uh, he just won the Super Bowl, so nah, respectfully. Uh, well super deserved. Team. Well deserved. I'm going Lions punter. Uh, what's his name? Not Sam Martin. Um, Jeff Locke, beast. I love. He's that. He's great. <laughs> you got, Jeff as a, Locke as a special t- new special teams who's coordinator. Your, I respect. Who's your third the pick? Who you got? I'm going Rutgers. You have no idea who I'm going to say right now. Joseph Day. Nope. Big Rutgers guy. When we used to go to the games and shit. When Mo, Ray Rice was playing? there, Mo? there's no, no, no. no I love, oh shit, I do love Muhammad Sanu. Do love him. Uh, you know, he used to live in Cerebral. Cerebral yeah, guy. I know. Cerebral guy. Top three Rutgers player in like in mid two thousands, like when they all went to NFL. You had Brian Leonard, McCourty. Nope. Brian Logan Leonard, Ryan? Ray Rice. He was on this same team as that. Mike Teal. He's on their team too. What was number? Is that number twenty three? Think, who, think who was number twenty three on that team? That was Brian, Brian Leonard. Leonard. Brian Leonard. Okay. He's gotcha. the one that was hurt. Thinking another he was one. Like that. I still use him in NCAA. I'll give you a hint. Rutgers legend. He was on the same team as those three. He's still in the NFL, but not as the position that he got drafted at or played at Rutgers. Think about it. What positions last long in the NFL? Kicker. Okay, kicker's one of them. Not a kicker, though. Snapper. Yep. He was a snapper. He no, snapper. now he's a long snapper. Hmm. He's a Jersey boy, too. Went to Rutgers. I have no idea. Clark fucking Harris. I don't even know who that is. Me neither. You don't remember Clark Harris? No. What position Holy did he play in college? Shit. He was a tight end. He was number 81. You know too much about stats. It's crazy. I love Clark Harris, man. <laughs> I love Clark Harris. I got to get him on here. Shit. That's crazy. Wow. That's it. And so I Matthew Stafford. Rutgers because we used to go to those the games as the Panthers. And Jeff Locke, Punter, and, and then Clark Harris. Respectfully. You got to go, gotta go the different that's, way. No, that's a, I'm Lamar Jackson. Love me. Love Lamar. No kizzy. <laughs> Jalen Ramsey. Mm-hmm. And... Miles Hartsfield. <laughs> Tyron Matthew. Tyron Matthew. Honey Tyron Brown. Matthew's probably my favorite player to ever watch on college. Now you got to play him twice Austin. a year. Huh? you got to play him twice a year. Now. Twice a year. Are you going to try and get a jersey swap? Yeah, it'd be sick. Ugh. That's like going up to him like a groupie. Can I get your jersey? See, I'm the same way when I'm behind stage with all these guys. Like, I hate, like, do you have to going do that out of my way. Hand? Like, be like, yo, you think you're trying to swap I mean, you jerseys? could try and go up to him after the game. He'll look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. 
You probably only do it with people that you're friends yeah. with and stuff. Nah, you gotta get out of your comfort zone. I feel like it's different when you're in the league and you try yeah. to get somebody in the league's jersey that you don't know. And you're like, yeah. I mean, people, mad people were trying to get Cam's jersey last year after the season. Like, yo, Cam. And he was like, yo, I don't have any more jerseys, but he had mad jersey in the back. Because if he gives one to one, everybody starts asking. Mm-hmm. I think the best jersey I got right now is probably either AJ Bouye got his jersey. Um, you got Gillies, don't you? I don't got Gillies. Gillies supposed to give me one last year, but I'm going to get a Colts jersey. Um, I would say AJ's probably the best, like, known player that I got. Mm-hmm. Playing with him last year was lit. Learned a lot? Yeah. Eh. <laughs> no, he, he knows everything. <laughs> He's played, my played in front of him. Yeah, he, he started over me for a couple. Once I got injured, he, then I came back and we, got like, split spot. time. Got a spot. He got a spot back. So, Humble brag. Who is, like, you're just asking about three guys right now in the league. Like, who are your favorite players? Like, who did you want to be like when you were a kid? Hesner. Devin That's Hester? why I wore 23 in high school. Different. That's why I wore 23. Best punt returner yeah. to ever play the game. He was the most ever. He should be in the Hall of Fame. I don't yes, care. he should be. His stats, I mean, his return yards <clears throat> are ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. I would say Crazy. Devin Hester is the reason I wore 23. Not Jordan. Not Jordan. I wore 23 in college. He's my son. Devin Hester. I didn't pick it. <laughs> no, Miles Hartsfield. <laughs> we didn't pick it. We didn't pick our numbers. Um, Devin Hester, um, Ed Reed, and Ray Lewis. All right, favorite player in the league. Right now. Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Hands down. No question. Why Jalen Ramsey? The dog in him and the way he attacks everybody like they're regular. Dude, I only he know. Guard, he guards every one receiver. Uh-huh. Like, most people will get nervous before a game. And I don't know talks, if he does. He talks shit, too. I don't mm, know. Sometimes it's a way of coping with your nervousness. But I think the way he attacks every game like it's a, the same game, true professional. There's only it's one different. person I know that loves Jalen Ramsey more than him, and that is Corey Williams. Corey would not. Sh- he's, he loved FSU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> Jameis Winston, bro. He loved them. He would oh not shut God. up. Bro, he'd be, we'd be in computer class. Uh, Miss Berman, I hate her. But uh, he'd be watching uh, highlights the entire time because I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be like Yeah. Him. Sitting on the computers, him. never doing work. No. Just doing highlights. We kind of had like the same journey. He played safety, then he moved the corner. Mm-hmm. I went for corner, played safety. Other way around. Our best teammate. Best teammate, like right now or ever? College, NFL. College, NFL, best teammate. It's a good question. Like that helps me or is just like best teammate to just be around that help? Anything, man. Whatever you think. High school, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Dante Jackson. Dante? Mm, you, come into the meet- Jackson. you come into the meeting and there's never a dull moment. Like even if he's feeling bad, like... He had some problems going on last year, but always kept a smile mm-hmm. on his face. Always keeps up everybody uplifted. You have a bad place, the first person to come. Like, always good, smiling. Bro, don't worry about it. Like move on to the next play. Like I would say, that's a dude. Like I emulate in, in a way of always coming to work with a smile, because mm-hmm. it could be your last one. And with football and being in the profession, you never know when that that last snap is going to happen. Mm-hmm. So always be happy. Always be appreciative. Always understand, like, there's somebody looking up to you, even if they're in the same room. Like, mm-hmm. I sit next to a dude every day, Justin Burris. Played for, got drafted by the Jets, played in Cleveland, and now plays for us. Sit next to him every day because I want to emulate my kind of... Him and Dante are probably my favorite teammates because, like, I emulate so much about my life, and he has a whole business behind him. He doesn't just play football, you know what I'm saying? So those two people in different ways, they... They're my favorite teammates. I guess perfect time to ask you guys. If you weren't playing football, what would you be doing? Obviously, I know you got you got Limitless. You're doing the podcast network. Yeah. What would you be doing? I mean, I went to school for broadcast journalism. Okay. So I would, you know, my dream when I was younger to, was to be on Sports Center, doing some type of, you know. I wanted to be on radio, though, when I was young. When, once I got into college, because radio's he's more got not the, a, He's yeah. got the face for radio. Great face. <laughs> Can't oh, yeah. see your face in radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but... I would say either sports cast, sports broadcasting early on. Then once I got into the training stuff and started training people, seeing people go from this point and then seeing them grow as a person and seeing the smile they got on their face mm-hmm. when they felt better, feel better. Now I enjoy it and I think it would either be <laughs> some type of sports casting or training. That'd be dope. What about you? Obviously, you're coaching now and stuff, mm-hmm. but if you weren't coaching, what would you be doing, you think? You know, I... I actually got away from coaching for a couple of years and got into like an electric. I was working for my girlfriend's uncle uh, doing an electric and I hated every second of it. Um, Good money though. 
yeah, it was good money. It was. A, it's a great trade to learn. It's, but I wasn't able to fit coaching in the way I needed to. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm. You know, part of the reason leaving Kane was I wasn't gonna be able to give them 110 percent, and like not being with doing electric and not being able to coach like at 110 percent, it sucked. I I think if I didn't get into coaching when I did, like if I didn't go to college to play football and if I didn't get hurt and come back and start coaching right away, I probably would have just gone to a union, digging holes and. Swing and hammer. Nothing wrong with Swinging that. a hammer. Nope. Nothing's wrong with that. Paying bills, for me, you get to do. For me, it wasn't for me. Respectful. I tried. I tried it. Um, so I'm. I'm hopefully to be a teacher in the next year or two. Just continue coaching. Sorry. Right. He. Where did? Where he's going to go be to the college? best. I went to Kane. Oh, you did go. To I played. Brother. I went to Kane. Yeah, nice. I played. My first Good year. Good teaching school. I, yeah, I played my first year and got hurt in camp first week. Concussion put me in the hospital. Kane was out that whole fall. Couldn't go to his classes. Spring. Dude, did spring ball, went to classes in the fall, went through half the season, and got another three or four. And then the doctor was like, you can't go no more. And that put me out of school. And then I took a semester off, went to Middlesex. I wound up coaching at a junior college in Brooklyn. Got my I AA. That. I got my AA there for free, coaching there. Nice. Yeah, so. He's going to be the best athletic trainer in New Jersey. Yeah, I'm working. doing that, too. He, he work, yeah, I'm he doing work, that, he too. So I work, I work at the school. I work at the gym. You. We run this. We help out. Is Law still there? Yeah. Yeah. That's my guy. Cool dude. He mentored me a little, like, right out of high school when I was getting hurt and I didn't know what to do. Like, he was in my corner from, like, day one, mm -hmm. always kind of, like, pushing me. And even with my ups and downs, like, going through a bunch of stuff in the last, since, I mean, I graduated high school nine years ago. In nine years, there's mad stuff that just went on that I didn't know how to cope with or handle and... He was someone that was kind of like always there trying to steer me in the right direction. But I'm too hard-headed. I don't listen to nobody. Sure, we're getting fucking old, man. I'm on my 10-year reunion next year. Dude, no, <laughs> they, they'd actually do that? Dude, yeah. No. My sister I, just had my, um, my best friend's fiance was my class president, who I'm, be I'm best friends with her as what well. What was her name? Alyssa Godwin. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're running. Fucking she, my peer leader counselor or whatever. <laughs> I was a peer leader. I was the worst peer leader. Oh, shit. Trust me, I remember those <laughs> I actually got suspended in that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but she wants me to help her run our 10-year reunion. So, I mean, pretty sure you know a lot of people. Yeah, that's why she's it's like, gotta, yeah, like I think track you, people down. She's like, I think you can get people to come. I'm like, I mean, I could try. Damn, you were, uh, I remember, obviously I know your brother and your dad, but you were in my uh, creative writing class, Miss mm -hmm. Scarperi. Scar you, Christian. How do you remember teachers' names? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. remember I much. Memory. I remember weird I things. I remember Miss Nappy. Uh, She's still there. I could not remember Miss Nappy. <laughs> Back. <laughs> <laughs> See, everybody's shaking their head. Yes. Miss <laughs> Nappy. You yeah, that's love crazy. That class, you're... You wanted extra credit. Hey, however it comes, you're... Man. <laughs> this guy. All right, well, we talked a lot about uh, non-related card stuff. I talk a lot about cards, but I want to ask one more question about non-card stuff. And I'm going to ask you, uh, <clears throat> besides, besides all the card stuff, you don't have any cards. But Limitless Fitness, you're doing all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It'd be pretty cool if, like, you got a company involved, like, you know, like Panini. Those, that's the company that makes football cards right now. Film some stuff, get a little behind-the-scenes type thing. I want to try and make that happen one day. I mean, I feel like that's good. You need a card, first of all. I do. I used to look up your name on eBay. And there's only like replica jerseys like that, like <laughs> you know these companies make. I wanna try and get one, and uh, I wanna try and get cards. But I always look because you do you know where like all your your jerseys end up? Sometimes do you keep all them because sometimes they end up wherever. Bro, no I'm, idea. No idea. No idea. No idea. See, it's crazy. So obviously I, I keep saying I'm a Detroit Lions fan. Mm -hmm. My favorite player of all time. You definitely never heard of him. His name's Corey Schlesinger. He's a fullback, number 30, from 95 to 2006. So nobody gives, nobody cares about fullbacks anymore, really. Love you know what I mean? Fullbacks are tight ends now. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. There's, like, Put only a few, few actual, like, full-time fullbacks. Full Juice. Yeah. Juice check. Uh, well, he's, like, a tight Ricard, end. Ricard, Patrick Ricard. Yep. Um, so that was my guy. And I flew from Vegas to Detroit. So I was at, like, a like a business thing. It was, like, an event, like, car, slash car show, whatever. So I went there and I saw he was doing a signing and I told people in Michigan, I'm like, if you ever see him doing anything, let me know. So I flew there. I got like 120 things signed. Before that, I started looking up some of his stuff on eBay and I found a couple game used jerseys and I got him to sign them. Oh, and wow. he's like, where the hell did you find this? 
I'm like, no, someone had it on eBay. Actually, somebody, I posted in a group, I'm looking for Corey Schlesinger stuff. Mm -hmm. And this dude who owns a store somewhere in Michigan was like, hey, I have a game used jersey from like 2000. I'm like, oh, all right, oh, how much? Tough. Pay like three, 300, 400 bucks for it. Like, dude, I'm never going to find this again. Right. So I got him to sign it. So I'm just like curious because like obviously you guys are talking mm -hmm. about jersey swaps and stuff. I mean, Keep those, track. those jerseys, I know where they go. Mm -hmm. Like... I mean, I have every jersey I've ever worn, mm -hmm. at least one. So I have my Bombers jersey. I have a Leprechaun's jersey. My parents have it. My mom's big, so she, she does everything for me. I have a Leprechaun's jersey. I have a Cerebral jersey. I have an East Coast Prep jersey, a Ole, Ole Miss jersey, and then I have a Panthers jersey. But when I give them to people, if they frame them, I don't know. Mm -hmm. If they give it to a friend friend member, I don't know. Um, so It's crazy how that works. My office mm -hmm. is decked out. I got, like, four of his jerseys. So oh, you, guys get, you guys get gamers. You get like I, right now. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but at that point, you would get like two or three jerseys per game in the mid 2000s. You'd wear one, and then the other two you would have. You'd pick the one that you want to wear, mm -hmm. and the extra ones they call pro cut, and they just go wherever. Like equipment managers take them, oh. save them. Yeah, at the end of the year, one. <coughs> right now we um, after the game you can't trade any jerseys during preseason. Mm -hmm. You could trade jerseys during the game, but every jersey you swap, you pay for. You get one free for the tied clean. The thing they have with Todd, you get one free jersey to swap to take home. <laughs> Todd every, Todd every, right? <laughs> every other jersey costs you money. So what when do they I trade you? Uh, our, I think every team is different. Our team charges 300 a jersey. I was going to say, That's a good I think price. you told me 300 300 price. a jersey. So when people ask me for a jersey, I'm like, <laughs> you might as well go buy one off the site and yeah. I'll sign that. But if you're cool nah, with me. you want the legit, bro. There's such a big difference. Yeah, Actually, yeah. Right now, I don't think there is, but there's certain things, like, on the tag and whatever. Yeah. It'll have, like, your name sometimes, and then, like, uh... Look, I'm going to get you a jersey. Huh? I'm going to get you a jersey. I got one at the crib for you. Black. I'll frame it. I'll put it... Bro, I have a Mike Trout signed jersey I need to put up. I run out of space quick, but I'll put that shit up. 100%. Got you. You can find some room. Ah, <laughs> uh, find room. <laughs> bro, I just, like... So, we're all from Cerebral. I've said it many times already, but we're all from Cerebral, and it's just, like, cool to see... Like you guys doing your thing, like dude, you're in the NFL, mm -hmm. you're you're coaching, you're giving back to the community in a way, you're training people, you're training the youth to be better and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. One thing that I thought about, and we'll talk later, but with like the high school and whatever, I want to do like some kind of club to like mm -hmm. get kids thinking about entrepreneurship yeah. and stuff, because bro, you're you're doing it and you're in the NFL and you're talking about one of your other boys, he's got a whole business, so you can just fall back on that, like. Yep. I feel like one thing that schools do not teach kids is entrepreneurship yeah. and like doing other stuff to, I, know, I never, mm -hmm. and I know you don't, yeah. you never wanted a, you know, a, a eight to five job or anything like that. Absolutely not. Never wanted that. Mm -hmm. That shit is miserable. Absolutely. So I definitely want to talk about that, bro. Oh, we yeah. can. Get in touch with someone. I work in the school so we can, we can get, I can get that going. That would be sick. Yeah. And I would, we'll we talk, definitely we'll definitely that. talk more because I'll, I'll reach out to who I got to reach out to, and we can get that going, absolutely. I feel like Cerebil's, like, so just misses on a lot of things, like, to do for kids. I, I would remember, agree. I would agree. I remember, uh, I feel like the only thing that I, I we ever did that was, like, fun or, like, informational. So I'm big into wrestling as well. They had Mark Marrow mm -hmm. come in, and he's a motivational speaker now. Um, and he talked to us about, like, you know, being in the WWE and, all the drugs and all yep, the injuries yep. and stuff oh, I, like that. Oh, okay, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty big now still, but um, I remember that, and I was like, it just gets you thinking, like, dude, even if you reach one kid, and that's this it. kid ends up having a business one day, yeah. mm -hmm. like, damn, that shit, it really just takes one. It, takes it really one just takes kid. one person to listen. It's like when we train a kid, like, when a bunch, we train a bunch of together, and then that one kid takes that adjustment, and he gets better, and you see that smile on his face, it's like, all right, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. It really is all about like the kids and stuff. And mm -hmm. the reason I mentioned the company uh, Panini is because they're really big with like putting and getting the kids into the community and giving them stuff to like that's affordable and having fun with it. Because you know, there's a lot of kids like I feel like sports in a sense are kind of dying off like mm -hmm. fan base wise mm -hmm. because there's so much like first of all they're not playing. No, not as many kids are playing sports as, nah. as they used to be. Youth Everybody's sports numbers are so games. down. I, mean, I played three sports. Shit, I don't know. You played probably all of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. You played a lot of sports. I mean, it's just not the same anymore. It's not. Cerebral Little League, there's more softball players. Seriously? Then they took out the grass of one of the field of both. Wow. So, like, there's three baseball yeah, fields. back two, here. The yeah. midget field, there's two smaller fields, got no grass. What about the one where 
the they big one. Bombs to yeah, the that one still got that one still has grass. That's okay. like the main baseball yeah. field, but the numbers are so down, and they kind of had to combine with softball and get softball going because of how low the numbers are. It's like, like I don't understand why parents. I believe I believe the parents. Terrible, so I don't understand why. I blame yeah. the parents because parents. the parents are not are, are saying, "Oh, you can stay home, you can stay home," and mm-hmm. maybe they were afraid of COVID. All right, but now like let's start getting our kids back and being athletic. Like mm-hmm. we don't need the obesity. We don't need kids. Yo, know, what sports taught us, I know for a fact the three of us, is like, you can't teach that. Like what we learned about discipline and time management discipline, and sacrifice, focus, heart, team, <laughs> all of it. Like we learned all that through sports, mm-hmm. and these kids aren't learning nothing when it comes to like real life stuff because they're just watching the iPad all day. And they don't know how to. That's another thing. They don't know how to communicate. Nope. Talk to people. That's why they're so disrespectful nowadays. Yeah, they get into wild. a room and they think they could talk to however they want, however they want, and then until they get you know, smacked. <laughs> yeah, but I, I watch these crazy. seven on seven like videos now, and these kids after Ruthless. they score a touchdown doing stuff I'm like, you know, back in back you when I played, score a touchdown, throw the ball to the ref, and then Barry back Sanders to the is a goat because that's what he used to do. Mm. Like, all he that, did every time hand the ball. All to that stuff to try to get vi- go viral. Nah, I'm not with none of that. Nah, me neither. <laughs> I feel you for sure. We'll definitely talk about that, but. I got some stuff for you to rip. So this is a brand new Panini Prism uh, football. These are blaster boxes. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to give you guys some packs. Okay. So we're going to open this up. Not every player in the NFL is here. There's like a 440 player checklist. Okay. So if you could pull one of your teammates, who would you want to pull? And if you could pull anyone, just in general. In in the NFL? NFL. Or of all time or now? Uh, So there's some past players in here. And there's some current players. Okay. Although there's mostly current, but some past players. Like, there's one dude in here that I didn't expect, Mike Allstott. Oh, wow. He used to met him. Love him. He's he was a, a beast. beast. Airs three. Airs three. All right. So when you pull one that you like, kind of show him over there a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you. Should I let you. him go first? Yeah, go one, go one. Go back and forth. So yesterday, I opened an older box right here. This is a 2008 uh, Top Sterling Baseball. So when you open this... There's a name. Mm-hmm. This one just happened to be Babe Ruth. Wow. Everyone knows Babe Ruth. Yeah. Everybody knows Babe. Um, so what happened is, you, if you pull, open the box, so there's a cover over it, it's going to have the name of whoever's cards are inside. So you get four cards. Could be an autograph, uh, a relic, and then there's three cards that are just base cards that are going to be numbered. Kind of like this. I didn't bring the other Ruths out. Actually, they're in here. But So they look just like that. They're really dope. Oh, so I got three tough. Ruths like this, number two, 250. And then, wow. this is the poll of the week. Wow. Babe Ruth, game used bat card number to ten. So that's inside that. Yeah. So they cut up uh, one of his bats that he used one day, and you know put it in there, and it's authentic game oh, used. Wow. So that's dope. dope. That's tough. Would you? That's so let me ask you guys. So obviously I know you guys don't much about cards. You know your sports, but what do you think this card's worth? There's only ten of these. That's gotta only be only ten game used bat card. That gotta be. In the- I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a hint. It's not super crazy, but it's like. It's like some serious money. Couple grand, three hundred. It's got. He's closer. Like. So I think realistically, like it's grand? probably like like a thousand dollar card. Wow. For one crazy? singular card. Yep. Damn. So who who'd you got in there? I got Cooper Cup. Ooh. I got Jarvis Landry. You think you can guard Cooper Cup? Yeah. <laughs> we play him too this year in in uh Vegas, in uh California. In, in LA. Trey Simeon. And Adrian Amos. So what do you think the best card in that pack is? Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. I, I'd, agree. I, I'd agree with that. Definitely now, I see when you open up cards and you, you do them like, you hold it like this. Yeah, so I'll show there's you. you a whole, there's a whole way. There's a whole way. There's a whole way to do this. Yeah, because you don't want to mess bit. the card up. It depends Perfect. on the product. Depends. So right now, behind us, in that office over there, they're live on Instagram right now uh, opening packs for people. Oh, so tough. there's... Oh, All wow. different kinds of ways. You could do a raffle. Um, you know, say this is like an $80 box. You got four spots, 20 a spot. You random it online. Oh, wow. Winner gets the whole box. You could do a hit draft. So say there's six cards in a pack. Mm-hmm. It's uh, $20 a spot. And then you open the pack. After that, you randomize it. And whoever gets, you know, whatever the list goes in, then yeah. you pick the card. Or you could just buy the whole box and we open it for you. Something oh, wow. like that. And then you send it to them or they come pick it up or Yeah, whatever. so people can come pick it up. You send it to them. Oh, that's tough. Whatever. There's so many different ways to do this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you're pushing content like that every day? 
So right now we're breaking uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then on the weekends when we have time. Mm -hmm. um, and then Monday night we do something called like a live sale. So just single cards. So for example, I'll take this Nolan Ryan. I'll have it on the camera. Usually we have like 100 to 150 people mm -hmm. in there. So like Nolan Ryan, top sterling uh, insert number to 50. I'd be like 20 bucks. First person to comment, sold Nolan Ryan, sold Ryan, sold Nolan. Oh, wow. They'll get the card at the end of the night. We'll DM them a tab. We keep track of everything. We got like four people okay. doing it. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's not exactly an off. Yeah, we got a whole team. That's fine. It gets crazy. It gets crazy. That's cool. Let's see we what got, got CJ Henderson. Oh, Charlotte. You know the vibes. <laughs> Panther, we got Panther Native, yeah. Darnell Savage. Oh, yeah. Silver. Oof. What's that? The next one? Yep. This guy's like all shiny. Oh, wow. So. Randall Cobb. He's back with Rodgers. He might be their number one receiver. Shit. Tariq Hill. That's your boy. Can you guard Tariq Hill? I did. How'd it go? Me. He went crazy. <laughs> so, this, so now this one is different than these because it's shinier. Yep. So worth more money, you're saying? Randall Cobb ain't really worth yeah. too much. So it'd be uh, like what the bigger goal? names. All right, so you got an orange one. So that's, uh, it's not numbered, but if it has a color, it's better than the regular one. See, so like, that, I got one here. Is too. that Brock, Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar, remember that's him? That's tough. Wow. The wrestler, wrestler UFC. Yeah. That's him right there on the, on the sign. Well, oh, we took it down, but. That's <laughs> tough. So that, that's actually pretty cool. Brock Lesnar. So this is how, like, you pretty much open it. Some people go like that. Some people mm. like this. Pat Tillman. Oh, my. Yo, there's, I read a book about him. Fire book. That's an American hero right there. American man. hero. Pat Tillman. You know about Pat Tillman? No. Safety, you, you need to learn. Okay. First of all, he's a great safety. Respect great safety. You. And Top then three. he left the NFL to go into the military and died in action. Oh, wow. Yep. Killed in action by a friendly. Dang. Yep. That's tough. So he's like, I don't know, Pat Tillman Foundation and everything. Yep. Nishan Wright. Now him I have never heard of. Neat. Same. And Aziz Ojolari. Oh, that's, that's an, an orange. Giants pick. Yeah, I don't, that's from last year. Honestly, he's from Georgia. Yeah, no, they so might have played him this him. year. He's, a, he's gonna be a rookie. Uh, this is they so. Did. This is 2021. He's last. He's in. Oh, 2021. he's the other one. Yeah. So they don't even have cards. So Panini's actually like the company oh. that makes them. They're like really backed up. So the only thing with rookies from this year is uh, it's called Chronicles. That's it. Okay. But this is Prison. This is one of the better products. Oh, word. Okay. So Miles, you're up. You got two oh, more. No. Yes, sir. There's so much to know about cards that. All right. So you said hold a lot up. <laughs> hold a lot up right now. You just use your thumbs. It's like you're shuffling cards almost. Okay, oh, gotcha. Oh, it's Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. Not feeling that. Got oh. it. Oh, Cortland Sutter Sutherland. Okay. Sutter. He's legit. He's legit. Nah, yeah. Oh, Ooh, oh, oh. B yeah, Burns. Yeah. I got to call him right now. <laughs> got I got your card, Brody. Oh, that's tough. Got B Burns. You already know. <laughs> what team? Spidey. Which team is the card for? Or what team is he Panthers. on? Panthers. Panthers. Oh, he got the Spidey Panther cards? What you no, mean? I didn't know if he... Because oh, he played... Didn't he play another team? <laughs> This nah. guy. Nah, he's the oh, only, he's only been with yeah, yeah. He was Florida State. Florida State. He, he was, he, what, 2018 or 19? 2019. Yeah, he was the year before 20, you. Yeah, okay. year before me. Okay. Yeah. And then Deo... At a bingo. At a bingo. A big boy right there. It's a yeah. huge boy. Looks huge. All right. Here that, Brian, that Brian Burns go crazy. That's You're, tough. He you pulled your teammate. AJ Green. I met... Yo. You said... Really yeah, nice I, guy. I've heard you talk really about nice him. Dude. Tony Romo. My brother would love that card. Stupid Cowboys fan. I got an orange one. Travion Morig. Never heard of him. I think Raiders. Ohio State. And then oh. Felipe Franks. What do you know about Felipe Franks? Felipe Franks. Did he transfer to Florida Arkansas? Florida transferred to Arkansas. We played him. He I got think. drafted by the... He might be the starter this year. He was year. at Atlanta. Uh, he was at Atlanta think, playing tight end. You think he's... Third string quarterback year? that played tight end, that played punt, that played everything. He played tight end? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. He was playing tight end for... Felipe Franks him. was in the Elite 11. Fun fact. That's kind of crazy. I think it's going to be Mariota. Damn it. And be the starter. Yeah. He'll definitely. be the backup. No. Ah, they're so probably going to bring someone else in. They're, they drafted Woody Call from um, Cincy. Uh, Ritter, Ritter. Oh, Ritter, Ritter that's Ritter. right. I like this in Ritter. Be Mariota and then bring in him. I'm going to go real quick. Patch Mahomes, I mean. Mm. Fire. Minka, he's a local boy. Yeah, oh, Bridge. my dude. Yeah, Mink just got a big contract this yeah, year. Yeah, he did. Deserving he himself. Paid. Ross Blaylock and Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. He was, he was there last two, a couple weeks ago, too. Drew Bledsoe's fire. Minka lives, like, uh, one of my friends lives, like, right next door. He was, like, five minutes away. Yeah, he oh, was really? a rare yeah. to Vancouver. Yeah, he was. 
Van Cougar. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cougar, yeah, yeah, Cougar. Cougar. Yeah, Overage. Yeah, we used to get smacked by them, He too. was on that team that went to Florida. I mean, they won it all. Mm-hmm. They had that tall, tall ass Tall kid, kid. that had pads down Oof. his <laughs> shit when he was like 6'3". Really? As a, like a seventh grader. I don't know what ended up happening to him, but... I don't know either. I remember that kid. He was like the kid from Woodbridge that was mad tall that played tight end. Okay. He was like that kind of height. Like tall, like lengthy. Nyers? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nyers? Tall. He's the DC over there now. Or OC. I got Buda Baker. Like that. Like Legit. that. He almost... You got to watch how he hitting. Yeah, he be hitting with he his be. head. Eric Metcalf. Okay. Jalen Camp. Jaguars. And Darius Slay Jr. Ooh. Darius. I love Darius Slay. That's my dog. That's Philly, right? That's my dog. Yep. You cool with him? He, yeah. Oh, he trained with Vest. Yeah, that's my dog. Same DB. That trained. guy, that, Slay's all about like helping promote like small businesses and stuff. Yeah. He's a good dude. I went on IG Live with him one time. I just want to talk to him. This is like during quarantine and everyone was mad bored mm-hmm. talking about like top three R&B and I'm like, shit, I don't really listen to R&B like that. <laughs> he like <laughs> roasted me for what I said. I don't remember what I said, but I'm like, dude, you got to stop by when I had this store in Philly yeah. at one point. You gotta stop by over there, and like you, you, you just got traded. So oh, that, that was nice. He's a cool dude. Hell, hell yeah, good dude. Yeah. All right, we got we got a couple more packs each. So Miles, I want to ask you. You don't have any cards, which is kind of uh-huh. sad, because like I told to you, get some too. I used to look on eBay all the time, trying to buy some of your stuff. I'm like, you don't even have any anything old Miss, like just independent cards or anything. It's kind of crazy. So I tried to ask my agent. I was like, Yo, you can get me some cards. And he was like. Oh, yeah, I talked to people. I don't know if he really did. You know, Mm -hmm. people be saying they did things. And he was like, yeah, they're kind of backed up. And he said, because I was undrafted, I wasn't important, basically. So that that was the story. So this is a product that someone like you might have ended up in, or this or Optic. So these are the top two products where, like like I said, there's like 440 different players. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you potentially could have been in because, to be honest, there are some people in here that, like, I don't know. You don't even know. Yeah. And that's how it ends up sometimes. But... Got it. We gotta get on that. Hey, we gotta get Just on. your boy. Hey, hey, hey Robbie, big Robbie. Yeah, Robbie, nice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I could do. I'm about to. Oh, what the hell? Paper stuck to the card. Curtis That's Martin, crazy. legend. Kevin Byard, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Happy retirement. And Taysom Hill. This is probably be the best little pack I got. That's tough. I gotta talk I got to my. I got a lit one right here. Yeah. Got a lit one. Who you got? Got, not this one, but when I get to him. Yeah. We're looking for the rookies. That's what we're looking, looking for. for the rookies. Antonio Gibson, like that. Kareem Hunt, Devontae Parker, and Tom Brady. Ooh, got the a little fire. So we're looking for the rookies. Can, can we at least agree that Tom Brady is the GOAT, like just all time overall? Yeah, yes. nah, there's no, nah, there's no argument. Right. That's I'm, the first agreement we have on players. I <laughs> definitely agree with that. Uh, ooh, Penai Sewell. He's going to be elite for a long time. Yeah, he is. I love him. Lions are going to be good. TJ Hawkinson. Lions, not That's this your year. boy. Cam Newton on the Patriots. JC Horn. Hey. Was this a, not, That's this a rookie? One, this would be a rookie? Yep. Oh, yeah. Because it has the RC, RC on, it? on the top? Yes, sir. Okay. And then Honey Badger. Tyron That's your boy right there. Tough. Yeah, this is a good pack, too. That's eight ball right there. Yeah? Yeah, eight ball. Yeah, wait, he still wears number eight? Did you change your number? No, nah, nah, you're 38. Big 38. How did you pick 38? Oh, oh. It was given. It was given? And, you know, and rest and in peace with Big it. Pop Smoke. You big Woo. Yes, yeah, sir. So. Woo forever. Big, big 38. So 30, you're never going to change it? Nah. Unless, you God forbid. He got the chain on. He got can't the whole change chain on Big 30. I feel, I feel that. I feel 38 that. Hawker. It's icy. Well, what if, God forbid, one day you get traded or... If they don't have 38? If they don't have 38, where are you going? 23. 23? Back to what it. What if 23 is taken? Because you are, I, obviously, you wear that number almost Seven. your whole life. If I go... What so did you wear, Ole Miss? Eight? 15. 15, yeah. okay. And that was given. I never, I was, I've never been big into numbers. Mm-hmm. I was just like, whatever's given me because I'm all about production. Like, mm-hmm. I, you can make us a, a number hot. So it means you want to be number one? Nah, I would never, <laughs> I, would, I would never be number one. I would say if 38, 23 ain't, take, ain't picked... I would go like seven. Like, I'll go to single. Prep single digit as a DB now is crazy. Yeah. JC got that eight, right? That's yeah. tough. I'll take that. Hell All right. Man. So, I got just one more question for you. If you had a card mm-hmm. right now, right? Say they're going to make a card to you. You could pick any picture, any action shot. Ooh. What would you want to be doing on the card? 
Zach and Tom Brady. Zach nice. and Tom Brady. That's tough. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be a lit card. That'd be a lit card. The, I, I, the cards they gave me for the camp, I, I don't like it because I had the club on. I'm like, like come mm. on, bro. It was a nice picture, but yeah. I'm like this. I mean, that's still pretty cool, too. Yeah. Cause... It's a picture that's never going to happen. Hopefully, never happen again. Yeah. God forbid. Is that what the, the scars from? Yeah, got. So, what exactly happened? Shoot. Came on a blitz. What's the offensive lineman for the, the big dude for the Jets? Offensive tackle. Like, he's like three. He's the hugest uh, person on the team. Beck, Beckett? Oh, Beck, Beck, uh, Mac, Mackay. Mackay yeah, Beckton. Mac, yeah. Pulled. Took me off my feet. Put my wrist down. Mm. Pulled it. It was You over. knew right away. I played three more plays with a dislocated wrist. So after that, you're just like, got okay, I'm going to play through it. Or you got the surgery? or Nah, I got the surgery. I was out for seven weeks. Yeah. Missed the Giants game. Missed the Giants know. game. But he's home. back playing uh, MetLife this Second year. Second game of the season. I got a question for you. Who? I got a question it. for you. Mike going to laugh when I hey, get I was going to ask him, do you want to wait? To no, see? no, no. Yeah, you guys got, got any questions? I got to yeah, ask this question. This is a question that we asked. We asked all our guys. Okay. So if you had... So NCAA came out in 2014. Okay. Right? And you had to pick somebody to be on that cover since 2014. Who would be on your NCAA cover? So to be honest with you, if you say who I think you're going to say, and I'm going to look at Mike and I'm going to walk out. I don't know, I don't know who you think I'm going to say, but I'm not a big college sports guy. Okay. Only recently because I went to Rutgers. Um, I love Rutgers. Uh Based off what? Just like being a beast? Just, just being like, a beast, their, their play. Anything, you know? It could be anything. Who football, you, football. 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 Yeah, NCAA. Yeah. What they did for the game, stuff like that. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. The last, like this draft class, and the one, well, now the last one was pretty, pretty solid, but this draft class I felt was pretty weak. Yeah. Very weak. And it could be anyone from 2014 and going, oh, oh no. You need me to name some people? Don't even think about I'll it. I'll name some people. No, nah, no, no, no. He knows no. enough. He knows enough. <laughs> No bias here. From <sighs> who you got? I mean, he's not 2014, but I would go just college game in general. Tim Tebow. Okay, that's he's a little early. Little early. Slightly early. It's the, that's, we'll give it to you. Yeah, we can. We can. We can we'll go with Tim as Tebow. long as it's so who are you thinking that I was gonna pick? Well, he I didn't want you to pick who I picked. Who he picked? As long as you ain't pick him, I'm Joe good. Burrow. Nah. Th Thank you. That's fine. Thank I you. Wouldn't even it was a close. clear. It was a clear. Nah. That's and cool. this is a guy who knows his stuff. Yeah, I'd agree. He is one year at LSU, right? Come on, Two. bro. And the Two. one year that he did, uh, uh, he was the highest man. He was undefeated. He was undefeated, national champion. Mm -mm. He Lamar, changed the Lamar culture Jackson of, was my pick. You know, what he did for college football, <laughs> sitting there with a Lamar cigar. Lamar Jackson is changing the game of football. Lamar Jackson in college was crazy. So he was Louisville. So I always look back at, uh, like, I love John Madden's, like, the QB camp and, and shit mm. like that. And Frank Caliendo yeah. Ooh, does, yeah. like, the mean impression. So one time he sits down with Teddy Bridgewater and he goes, this guy took a basketball team and made him a football powerhouse. Mm, so yeah. Gruden, Caliendo's next to me, he goes, you're telling me this guy took a bunch of basketball <laughs> players and made him play football? This guy's incredible, man. <laughs> and, Caliendo's funny as hell. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater starts cracking up. So I, I just remember, like, Teddy Bridgewater made him legit and then Lamar yeah. made him even better. Made him even better. Yep. A team. I'd agree. That team was lit. So I got one question I've been asking mm -hmm. all the athletes I've been meeting lately. Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Popeyes. Chick-fil-A. Oof. I know he's a Popeyes Popeyes. Guy. Popeyes all the way. What, so like Chick-fil-A is so overrated, So my here's guy. my thing with Chick-fil-A. That sweet heat sauce at Popeyes go crazy. So all right, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? You know, he's asking because... Popeyes, yes, sir. So now I picked Chick-fil-A because I'm a... Plain guy, so like I just get the chicken on the bread, like a chicken patty sandwich. The chicken at Pop at, at Chick Fil A, in my opinion, is better. The sandwich, everybody at Popeyes, there's more to it. The chicken tenders, Some, the the wings, you can get anything from Popeyes, Popeyes. Biscuits and French fries go crazy. Chicken nuggets at Popeyes are wild. crazy, bro. Like. The French fries and the biscuits at Popeyes go crazy. You need a little, you need some honey. Though. I feel like the only thing that's not strong at Popeyes is the fries. The fries. I like the fries. The fries. And I'm a French fry connoisseur. Chick Fil A has Popeyes on the fries. Mac That's the only cheese thing. at a Popeyes though. Lit. It's like baked. Like oh yeah. It's like baked on top. I'm like not a huge layered... on like fast food. I so, but like I'll go to Chick Fil A whenever I can. People say Chick Fil A. Ain't Chick Fil A fast food. breakfast. I know you just did the Wendy's thing mm -hmm. with the the biscuit, the Yo. bacon, egg, and cheese on the biscuit on Good. Wendy's. The bacon, egg, and cheese on a biscuit from Chick Fil A is also fire. Fast breakfast is trash. 
I can't really say. I've, I've had like the breakfast biscuit sandwich. Yeah. Like just the chicken. The on, chicken. Yeah, it's fire, also fire. It's, it's just chicken on a, a biscuit. biscuit. Yeah. But it's all I like. I'm plain as hell. I don't <laughs> eat until 12 o'clock. You're bugging. Midnight? PM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asleep by 12 a.m. Unless I'm on the game. He's capping. Big gamer. You game? Uh, honestly, no, I don't do fantasy sports either. No? Nope. Not at all. Now, because you're not into it? Or no, just because I live in the real world. Yeah. You know, not kidding. But no, <laughs> seriously. But I see, I just, I just never, never got into, into it. it. A hell of people ask me, like, yo, you want to get in our league, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I just don't do it. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of people do do it simply to, like, keep up on the stats and stuff. i just always been like that. I'm just interested. I'm the fantasy guy that doesn't pay attention to the stats. I just pick who I think is doing well at the time. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I don't, don't I'm not even like big into coach player. Would say. Yeah, I'm not even big to play. Like you ask favorite players and stuff like that. Like I don't, I don't have favorite players. I just like the game. Like, I, have favorite, I, I have favorite, I have most schemes. remembered players. Who knows? Yeah, they, they I do have that. favorite schemes. <laughs> we want to talk about. We want to um, talk about scheme right no. now. You guys, guy, got any uh, anything else you want to talk about? Any other? No, questions? just hit up our any... podcast. Yeah, we gotta get you on Shout our podcast. Out. Yeah, check out the Off Season Network. Uh, follow it on Instagram under uh, the off under the Off Season underscore. Uh, T H O F F S C N underscore uh, our YouTube. You can follow the Off Season Network. You can follow This Is Me. That's where our podcast drops, and then we'll throw like a bunch of our clips. Um, we're getting other podcasts to join our network, and you know we're just trying to build something, a platform for other people to kind of come out and Dope. you know grow what they want to do, whether they're starting out fresh or you know they already have a podcast. Like we want to give people a platform. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're big on. Everybody growing together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, if, like we've talked if you, about. If you, got, if you got followers, we got followers, and all our followers, we hop on one episode, it's all together. It's the off-season mm-hmm. podcast. That's where each can take from each, and everybody mm-hmm. helps each other grow. Everybody's so eating. That's what you know. my whole life's been about. You know what I'm saying? Everybody likes it. From an outside view, they say, oh, he's selfish, but then when they get to know me, like, mm-hmm. the genuine guy who likes to see people yes, more than myself grow into what their true potential is. So yep. that's all the network is really based off when I had when we had the idea is just helping the people who can't, because equipment is expensive. Yeah. Having a podcast is expensive. It's time consuming. So having that, you know, having the editors, having people who can shoot outside, inside, wherever your podcast is, buying you equipment mm-hmm. if you need it. That's all I'm Shouts about. Shouts out to Champion Stacks, the guy, the man behind the scenes. Yeah. He does it all the for Somerset us. Somerset Patriots hat. Yep. You must like Anthony Volpe, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I hate the Yankees, bro, but Volpe's all right. I'll never wear it. I'd rather burn it than wear it. But right. <laughs> I'll give you a deal on Yankee shit. I got you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, guys, I don't know. I don't, I don't really got anything else for you, but I really do appreciate you guys coming on. Like I said, Absolutely. it's this really cool to see people from Saraville just, like, you know, down to do whatever I can to help you guys. Mm-hmm. And Got to collab I, on some stuff. Yes, sir. I definitely want to come through on a pod. Yeah, we're going to get we'll, we'll talk after this. We'll get I, it set up. I see what your vibe is like. I like, I like the setup and stuff. And this appreciate is only the third episode here so yeah, yeah. moving like though I this said. is i mean the whole, the whole dope setup in the shop i think being in the shop is the coolest thing yeah. it's showing you what like you see do. it in the background yep. you see it enough to know like all right he got and yeah. the old shop is like a little smaller than i mean like just about a little more than half of this room yeah okay. you wouldn't so, you, i was gonna say you would never been able to do this in the old shop no bro i couldn't even i mean we got the offices back there yeah. and did the you storage. have an office in the other one <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> bro i was right th- i couldn't get away from customers if i tried Damn. like i'm like right there doing everything had like a little 10 foot closet behind me like if i really didn't want to like talk this is to ultimately people, but... a better spot for you oh yeah just oh, beautiful spot, i love bro. This i love this dope. area well Thank put you. together well organized for the most part, I'm gonna try. <laughs> hey, from a dude who don't know much about it, it's definitely, definitely lit. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm gonna to wrap it up right here. Shout out to our sponsors, Collects and Wager Attack Sportsbook. I appreciate you guys, Mike. Good luck with the the Bombers this year. Appreciate Honestly, it. I have no idea what the team's looking like, but we're gonna be okay. Come catch a game. I will definitely come to a game. But Maybe homecoming. Probably not though. <laughs> but, no, I'll definitely come to I'll a game. I'll stay on top of on top of you to get to a game. I'll, I'll definitely, I definitely love popping in, and then. Are you guys, you guys play anywhere near Giants. over here this year? Week two, MetLife. Week, Week two. two. I'm going. September 18th. I'm going to come through. We play, we Have play a in tailgate. Baltimore, which is pretty okay. close. Preseason, oh. we play in Washington and in New England. Okay. So I got to pop out to, to week two. 
I'll get my jersey by then. Yeah, Here I got we go. You. I'll, I'll pull up. You got to sign it right on the on yeah. the sideline. Let's do it. Let's do it. But for real, guys, I really do appreciate, appreciate you. you for letting us come on. Good here. luck this year. Stay healthy. Yeah. Mike, Absolutely. appreciate you guys. My guy. Thank you. This is dope. Yes, sir. That's episode three, guys. Make sure you follow us on YouTube, Instagram. Make sure you follow these guys. And uh, see you later.